of Saturn, virgin mother of virtue. Villainous animals will seek out and hurt you, distort you and twist you, and misrepresent you. Your elegant innocence has transformed you into a definite target of manipulations, angry ravagings of blunder your purity, spoil your seed, shadow you under scrutiny, or hide you entirely from consensus reality. Veritas, one and only. Veritas, our own. Veritas. Seeking her endlessly, she's ever elusive Further and further now, your source gets diluted And the well is always deeper, how deep can you die? How deep is your need to stare the truth in the eye? The truth is that you hide from her Hey guys, we're back. You know, if you like what you hear here and you want to support us, help us continue uh, bringing you better and better quality shows, uh, you can check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash realitybrief. Radio Free Air Radio has also got one if you feel like contributing to the station. Um, check us out on Facebook, Twitter. Also, we got our own YouTube channel. Search for Reality Brief. Um... We also got a group on Facebook. It's uh, facebook.com slash realitybriefnews. You should check it out. It's pretty great. Posts a lot of stuff in there. A lot of interesting things. So, uh, let me get this back up here. Now, we were talking with uh, Ileana, and uh, she's got a pretty interesting story about when she ca uh, first came out You know, with her secret space program story. Uh, whoa, that's not good. And uh, at, towards the end of the show, we will uh, go ahead and open up the phone lines in case you guys got some questions you'd like to ask her or talk about certain points. So, Ileana, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming back. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, tell me, tell me about what happened when you first started going public with your story. Well, I came out in January 2015. Um, I had my website messages from a star traveler. I then I did my uh, YouTube channel, Awakening Cosmic Reality Show, where I myself do some interviews with people, uh, just do podcasts, tell my story. I archive everything that ever happened to me with the ET abductions, the T contacts, the, um, the ICC SSP stuff, the 60 and back. Um, so I was doing that great starting January 2015, no problems. And then um, I did watch some Cosmic Disclosure uh, with Corey Good and David Wilcock. And, you know, I found it interesting. And some of the points did correlate what Corey talked about, the Mars bases, the ICC having bases on Mars. 
And I had actually done, um, I went to Google Mars using Google Earth, and I actually mapped out 11 different ICC Mars space coordinates that I remember where I was stationed on Mars, um, as well as two weapons facilities and two Mars colonies. I also mapped out locations on the moon, like Lunar Operations Command, um, Dark Fleet Base there, ICC Base on the moon, some labs, and some... Um, landing ports where they land and stuff and do mining as well so those ports are there as well on the moon um and i decided to email Corey good with that information with all of those mapped coordinates uh on google mars locations i actually saved everything that i mapped from google earth and i i sent it to him and i said hi Corey, could you um do you remember any of these bases? Can you corroborate any of these locations that I'm sending to you from Google Earth mapping? Um, and he responded back to me saying, uh, "Hi, do I know you? I don't. I don't recall ever talking to you before." Um, and he's like, "Who are you?" So I answered him, "My name is Alina." Blah blah blah. Gave him my in personal information because he asked for it. Um, the next thing I know, he's vet trying to vet me. He's he's replying to me saying that I was never in the secret space program. I wasn't. I was not in any of the ICC bases. Uh, that he that he checked with his top SSP brass, and they said they don't they don't know anything about me. That I was basically not in the SSP. I also claimed uh, that I had. Um, an encounter with the Blue Avians. This happened in September. Um, basically what ended up happening is I was very distraught that day. My own website had been taken down. Um, a woman claimed that I had copied her manuscript by the name of Elin, her book, that I took her book manuscript and put it on my website, which I never did. So I countered the copyright complaint with um, with my website, uh, ISB Publisher. And um, I had the copyright ban lifted and got my website back. But during that time where I was distraught, that's when the Blue Avian encounter happened. I was basically beamed up on a sphere, on a huge sphere, orbiting the Earth. It was a green beam. And I, I see this blue um, energy, shimmering energy. And I hear in my head, psychically, you need to steady your rainbow bridge body. You need to ground yourself and steady it. So the, uh, the contact with the blue avian can happen. Otherwise, we can't make contact with you. We can't talk to you telepathically until you're grounded. So I grounded myself and, you know, got in the energetic groove of being on the sphere um, and this blue shimmering energy suddenly morphed into the blue avian um, and he's telling me um, our history is very complex you should read um, Voyagers 1 and 2 by Ashiana Dean specifically page 264 um, our race was genetically engineered 2.6 billion years ago we have 48 stranded DNA. We're here to help humanity to ascend. Um, so that's the short history. He said you could read all the rest on page 264 in Voyagers 1 and 2. And I'm like, what? Usually ETs don't tell humans to go read a book about their history. <laughs> yeah, right. right, yeah. Yeah, um, and the second encounter I had was... was was with the um, Golden Radiance, a.k.a. triangle-headed beings, the yellow yellow beings that are 11 feet tall. Um, he told me that they have the ability to time travel, to open up star gateway portals, that they use green energy to do that. They can create mirrors in space and time and change time. So that was what he told me. Um, and that, again, I needed to center myself because... I was phasing out from the sphere. I couldn't hold my physical presence on the sphere because I was traumatized and upset. So he, he, he taught me how to hold that rainbow bridge body 
so I could physically stay on the sphere and interact with them. Um, and he told me that he comes from a green galaxy far, far away. It was basically... <laughs> a green one. A green one, Not yeah. Not to be confused with the purple galaxy. No, <laughs> no. Um, so that was interesting. And the blue avians have their whole protocol with the finger movements and symbols, gestures. I went through all that jazz with them. Uh, Six-step protocol. And I described that to Corey Good. He's like, nope, that's not how they greet. Mm -hmm. That's not their standard greeting. That's all wrong. He never replied back to my original question of um, about the Mars basis, ICC basis, and what's on the moon. Instead, he kept on questioning me about my ET experiences and encounters with the Blue Avians, um, the descendants of the L race, of the ancient builder race, because I had other ET encounters mm -hmm. uh, with ETs, humanoid-looking ETs that claimed to be the descendants of the ancient builder race. They called themselves the L. Um, and they have a world ship called the Akashan, and they've traveled 13,000 years from the future back here to help us with the ascension process. And I described all of that to Corey. Um, and I kept on asking him for my SSP ICC records because I didn't believe him. Mm -hmm. But he was telling me that um, I was never in the SSP ICC. I said, like, uh, can you check the ICC databases, not just the SSP? Are you sure your people have it right? Um, and if I was never in the SSP, can you give me official records of that, documents of never being in the SSP, which he couldn't do? So I wasn't believing anything that he mm -hmm. was emailing back to me. Um, and this started from September 3rd, when 2016, when I first emailed it to him. Um, and it ended on September 7th, where he's like, no, you know, what you're experiencing, that, that's, that's not correct. You were never in the SSP. And the next thing I know, he outs me as a fake whistleblower and a fake SSB insider on September 14th mm. and warns people that I'm um, a fake liar and a danger to children. And he uses my Blue Avian video, my encounter, as an example of a fake type of video about fake ET encounters with mm -hmm. Blue Avians that I'm lying, basically. Yeah, I remember reading that when it came out. Yeah, it was pretty harsh. He said, a woman living in the Ukraine, Ukraine has made such claims. First of all, I was born in the Ukraine. I don't currently live in the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. I live in Canada now. I've lived here for 23 years. So he didn't really, <laughs> um, he didn't do his research on me. Didn't know much about no, me. No, uh, and you would think if he's got access to these mega databases with all this information he would know you're not living in the ukraine at this point but um the interesting thing is now guys i did read those emails um so you know i kind of got an idea of what's going on in there and he he did say that you were you know abducted as a child and he tried to downplay to where no 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 it's just that and then they came as a follow-up the s the SSP came as a follow-up, you know, as they typically do with my labs. I mean, to me, it's, I hate to say it like this, but who died and made him king, you know what I mean? Like, I, how, do, how does, what gives him the right to, to, you know, like, there's no proof of any of this, right? What no. makes his story any more accurate than yours, and what gives him the ability to say whether or not someone else's story is credible. Now, uh, the, on the blue avian point, uh, you had mentioned earlier that had, that you thought it was a psyop. What, what, um, what made you come to this belief? Well, I know that various, um, programs, the ICC, the dark fleet, they have the technology to make you think that you're experiencing anything basically. Mm hmm they have the ability to put holographic inserts into your mind so that you feel like you're having a physical, real experience, having ET contact experiences, where you actually meet ETs or you meet somebody from the programs. They have the ability to holographically, um, through holographic technology, make you think and believe anything is possible. Right. That you're in having an encounter with someone or something. Um, and again, like I said, 
before what what was a kind of like a trigger for me um red bell started going off when the blue avian told me to go read page 264 of voyagers one and two from ashiana dean's material now i've had the books in pdf but i never read them before so i didn't know what was in the books mm-hmm. when i did go to read page 264 that's where all that history about the blue avians were that's where it was bam on that exact mm-hmm. page i would never read that before so i'm like wait a minute something weird is going on here now ashiana dean uh, how do i spell that it's it's definitely familiar i, I just can't place it now, what what organization was she from um, she has basically her own stuff. She does teaching about different galactic races, the guardians, um, mm-hmm. earth history, you know, going way back. So I can't even spell her name. It's too complicated. Uh, but I could send you the books later on. Right. Okay. I, I've definitely have- heard about it. I was just wondering if, um, what was it? The Galactic Federation of Light, if she was involved in any of that. Uh, I don't believe so, no. It's I, different. That name has definitely come up in my research. I just can't place it right now. Yeah, I think I found him. She was popular in the 1990s until 2000s. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she actually, in that Voyager's One book, she talks about um, beings having blue skin and feather type of feathers. She talks about the avians. Mm-hmm. She's, she says beings with blue skin and feather like that are avians so that's in her book so is she channeling is she saying she's channeling this um she's she's saying that she actually physically met the guardians okay and various different et species and she put all of that information in in the books in those two books voyagers one and two that the guardians imparted to her so I'm just wondering if, um, you know, this whatever group is behind this op, you know, this blue avian op, at least in your case, pointing you to her book, does that mean that they're doing the same thing to her and that's where she's getting all this information from? I can't speculate. I don't know. I've never met Ashiana Yeah, Yeah, I, d- I don't know either. And, and, you know, I'm not even familiar with her body of work right now, so well, I couldn't. Well, well, after that experience with the Blue Avians, which I still think to this day is a psychop, I actually started reading the books, and they're complicated. It's a lot of history going back to the wars, um, going back to all those different species and stuff. Um, It actually really talks about all of that in detail and provides some interesting information. And she talks about the holographic inserts in the book that they can make you think anything is possible. So I'm like... I, I I think I think these either the T groups, possibly the reptilians, because they've been involved in my life since I was two, and also mm-hmm. in the programs, the humanoid reptilian hybrids. They were in the programs too. I think they could be either responsible for it, or one of the SSP groups mm-hmm. could be responsible for the psychop. Now, do you think that the blue avians in general are a real thing, or you think it's just all, you know, make believe for the psych, the psyop? Um, there could be a race of uh, blue beings that might be avian, but uh, what interest would they have in giving a message to humanity through a uh, human representative? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think that's true. So. Without making any accusations here, do you think that uh, Corey Good is aware that this is going on, or is it you think that he's he thinks he's actually in contact with Blue Avians, or I think he's aware about the SSP stuff that he was in the program that he experienced what he experienced with the SSP. I think the blue avian stuff and the inner earth groups with the Anshar, that could be um, holographic manipulation, Mm -hmm. psychop. Um, Because from my own ET experiences and contacts, you don't constantly have um, contact with the same group for years and years and years. You have different ETs that can't come in and have contact with you. Mm -hmm. 
It's not, it's not a constant stream of the same ET group. Um, I think he is partially being manipulated. You think this has to do with the, um, the slow roll disclosure that he's always talking about? Yeah, I think it does because whistleblowers, um, have been known to be murdered, have been known to have accidents Mm -hmm. when they disclose something that's, you know, very important. Um, he's alive and kicking. So am I. Yeah. Um, And other people who have come forward. So something is really up around here. Um, I think he has handlers that work with him to provide a clear cut narrative. That's believable. It sounds sci-fi and it changes Mm -hmm. constantly. It's not the same anymore. It's not the same story that he's putting out. First it was the SSB, then it was the Blue Avians, then it was the Inner Earth, then it was Antarctica. Mm. Now it's the Nordics and the Vatican. He's talking about that. Yeah, and then let's not forget the the Air Force guys that came and picked him up. Yeah, the the lower MIC groups. And you know with the recent announcements of uh, they're putting into the latest national defense authorization in America to create a space corps that's similar to the Marines, but in the air force. So um, I'm, w- I'm wondering how much of that has to do with that. Yep. Space I, I, Marines I are a thing now. Space Marines already exist on Mars and the moon. That's done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, they're releasing, they're looking for public funding for it now to actually create an on the books space corps. Which well, is which is essentially it would be like the marine the marines are to the navy. It, this yeah. the space corps is to the air force. Well, I think they do need to do that because if the lower MIC is disclosed at some point, it must look legit. Mm-hmm. That's why they're doing the marine corps. Yeah, and it seems like you know maybe they'll just toss it out now, and then like two years from now they'll be flying around all oh look what we just came up with. You know how they do. Yeah, um, I I think Good has had contacts with the lower MIC. And I do believe he has handlers who help him to put out a good script that works. I just have a hard time with the amount of times that he said that his memory has been altered or, you know, erased or implanted memories, whatever. I just have a hard time with how he could be so clear about everything, you know, and steadfast in the opinion that this is reality and not like with any of you guys to me as an outsider it seems like any one of your memories could be programmed oh it can i sit for hours and hours sifting through all my uh, memory leaks and bleed throughs to figure out if it's true or not or if it's implanted i work at it i literally sit there examining my own memory recall of events to and I put question mark about certain memories and I examine it all in my head and I write it all out and I do video vlogs. I archive all of it. Mm-hmm. I archive it and it goes public. People can see what I do. Like I have no secrets. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure Corey, Corey Good is trying his best to the best of his knowledge and memory and whatnot. The thing is to put every, to put it all out, his story thing is he claims that he's in contact still with the SSP and the ETs. Um, and I'm sure he's had other email exchanges with other people and phone calls who have asked him, well, have I been in the SSP? Have I been in the ICC? Mm-hmm. And he he's like, yes, no, yes, no. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got to imagine that he probably does get contacted by quite a few people. And, you know, out of all those people contacting him... Uh, at least if he is legit in what he's saying, at least some of them would be legit. But yet on the Cosmic Disclosure show, you never see any other space program whistleblowers outside of like Tompkins. And with Tompkins, I, you know, I almost feel something fishy there, too, because he, with his documents that he releases, it, it's just collections of research papers that were done previously. And, you know, I would guess that the military industrial complex even on the surface, would be wanting to look at stuff like that. I mean, just to get ahead of the curve. So it doesn't, it, to me, it's not proof of a secret space program. It's proof that Douglas was looking at alternative propulsion methods. Um, yeah. And it seems like when I watch his interviews and different shows that he goes on, he kind of like, 
just agrees with whatever the host is saying. You know what I mean? It's like he doesn't. He just like whatever the host is talking about and wants to talk about. He just is like, yep, that's it. Like when he was on Cosmic Disclosure, it was the twenty and back. But he had never talked about that before. But now all of a sudden he's talking about the twenty and back when he's on Cosmic Disclosure. I, you know, it could be nothing. I just I play devil's advocate a lot, I guess. Well, after the email exchange with Corey and him outing me as a fake and a liar and a danger to children, um, you know, I started, I like, I was having a hard time trusting him in the beginning. I was questioning things. And after that email exchange and what he did, I'm like, I have, don't have much respect for this person. Uh, you know, I hope he's, he's okay. And whatever he's doing doesn't get him into any trouble. Cause right. You know, this, this stuff is really walking a tight, on a tight rope, fine line. Um, cause who knows if we're telling the truth or not. Like you said, it could all be manipulated fairly easily. Uh, I've done channelings. I've done hypnosis regression. I've I've done memory recall. Goodness gracious, what haven't I done to figure out all this stuff, my SSP stuff? Um, and I've publicly chronicled it all. So it's out there. Anybody can see it. I don't care if you believe me or not. I'm just sharing bits and pieces of what happened to me of my life archive right. that's all i'm doing and there's nothing wrong with that and i don't know i just i feel like there's no reason for him to be going around saying stuff like that i mean he hasn't presented himself he climbed up in the throne without actually having the papers behind it you know what i mean uh yeah, it's like his word is bond. You know, whatever he says is is what's legit, and I just have a real hard time with that. Me too. It's a huge <clears throat> yep. concern for me what he is, how he's interacting with people behind the scenes in in those emails and phone calls. Goodness knows what he's telling people, and where does he have the uh, authority to mm -hmm. do that? Who who has given him that authority to vet people? And he vetted me without my permission. I never asked him to vet me. I just emailed him about the basis. I never said, hey, Corey, can you prove or disprove that I was in this BICC? Mm -hmm. I didn't ask him to do it. Right. Well, he I just would, did it on his own. You know, I would, want, I would think that since he's become such a huge voice in the disclosure movement, that perhaps that could be steered from the shadows from, by one of these agencies like ICC or you know, Kruger or whoever. I wouldn't be surprised if the NSA and CIA and some other uh, three-letter agency is steering this, and perhaps he's working for one of those agencies mm. and has a handler from one of those agencies. No, I get a not. feeling he does. I have a feeling he does, just intuitively. I, I mean, but, from what I understand, from what he says, he can't just contact these people. So how is he even doing this vetting? You know what I mean? That's the spear, right. the spear being alliance, the, the, what do they call, what do they call, I'm not even going to go, <laughs> the, the blue aliens, yes. uh, they just show up and suck them in the ball and bring them up in the space. And then the SSB contacts and the inner earth stuff that just happens too. I mean, he can't contact these people. They have to contact him. So how does he go about this vetting process anyway, is what I would well, like to know. Usually how the contact happens with the SSB ICC drop ship comes to your house hovers over your house, beams you up, or tells you to go outside telepathically mm -hmm. for them to pick you up on the airship. They actually physically land and pick you up in the backyard. For me, they actually just beam me up from my bedroom, so there's no physical signs uh, on the ground of anything. They don't want it to be seen. They just beam me up. Right. I've seen the ships hovering over my house. I've taken photos, the triangular TR3Ws mm -hmm. and other more advanced craft. I've seen it over my house, floating above my house. Usually happens from 2 to 4 in the morning. They won't do it in plain old broad daylight. They like to do it at night. Makes sense. Yeah. When uh, it, they when, obviously don't want to be seen. When otherwise, I, they would. No. I saw, when, it, when I saw the TR3B that I saw, it was at night. Yes. The criteria, it has to be dark. All the neighbors have to be in their beds sleeping at night. And if you're living with roommates, those roommates need to be sleeping as well. Those are their criteria for picking people up at night. So that's how they pick him up as well in their 
scout ships, the drop mm-hmm. ships. Yeah, so it's not like you can just pick up your phone and call up your local ICC chapter and well, be, or Solar Warden or the Alliance or whatever. I mean, like, come, you know, come scoop me up, dog. I'm in the backyard. <laughs> it's not happening like that. I mean, but if you guys are listening right now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and <coughs> something me. else that Corey did say in his emails is that uh, he had vetted four other people. Mm-hmm. That he was emailing one of the uh, one of the people to let them know that they were in the SSP. That's what right. he mentioned in the emails. Yeah, he did say one of them was legit. But where? How come we haven't heard from this person? Well, we haven't. And you know, according to to what he, he was saying on the show, and look, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to go on a Corey hating rampage. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of this here. I mean, you know, I, as far as I know, I have no involvement with any of this, and I just would like to try and figure out what the hell is going on here. I mean, because it, lately, it's just been off the charts with fighting. I mean, and suspiciousness. Like, acting so suspicious, like doing weird, strange things in the whole um, the cult-like aspect of what's going on behind that. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, one interesting point is last week, because I actually saw the Dark Journalist um, three-part stuff with Bill Ryan. Mm-hmm. And when Bill Ryan said that Corey Good was not a legit IT guy, I had a hard time with that. I think Corey is a legit e- IT guy who... Mm -hmm. used to work for many companies. So I actually went and looked at his LinkedIn resume. And God, this was interesting. It really surprised me. I saw that he worked for Amerisar Spurgeon, which is a pharmaceutical company, that he worked with them in the IT department, and that he had two different commendations from that company for Mm -hmm. his work ethic. Um, I had sent Michael Sala about a month and a half ago he, um, he asked me some questions about what I remembered about the German companies in the ICC. Mm-hmm. I had sent him a document with a list of ICC shareholder companies. And guess who's on that list? Amerisource Burgeon. Interesting. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting to note, I'm, tr- I'm working on pulling it up here, there was a uh, an article posted on exopolitics.org, and I'm sure it was by Sala. Yeah, it was by Sala, and uh, it's talking about this exact thing. And he he pulls up as his proof that he's an IT, and of all the things that he could pick from his long resume is this Amerisource Burgeon Specialty Group uh, recommendation letter with a handwritten note, yeah. you know, just giving him a glowing review. And it's funny to me that out of all the things they could have picked, they picked that. Well, and the fact is, I remember that list of the ICC shareholder companies Mm -hmm. from the ICC databases. I was working on inputting that list into the ICC databases on Mars, on their basis. That's how I remember that huge list that I sent Salah. You say you sent that to him a month ago, and this article came out on June 11th. So Mm -hmm. unless he didn't read it, he already knew this information. So it leaves one to wonder if this is like a breadcrumb type thing here like maybe Sala is is you know uh being threatened then and all this somehow and, and it's funny too and I, I, we were talking the other night about um or maybe he's got an agenda of his own talking the other night about Gaia TV and um how when I was watching it and I was watching these different shows Whenever the topic of the secret space program would come up, everybody would be like, uh, like almost like scared to say anything because it might contradict Corey Good or something like that, you know, because he's on the same channel. So I'm wondering if there is something sinister behind this. Is are these people like Mike Asala and the rest of them being coerced in some way? And I don't maybe- think they're coerced. I think they're um, they've been they've gone way too deep reporting on Corey, they can't go back on it anymore. They just can't go back because they're way mm. too deep with, with the Corey camp. Yeah, I mean, and, I got to imagine if Corey Good got exposed to be a fraud or something like that, that it would probably wreck David Wilcock because he's put so much stock into him and his story. Um, whistleblowers come and go. Um representatives come and go every 10 years it's somebody else that's new that's what i've learned from from this community Mm -hmm. 
like what happened to Alex Collier. He he was reporting on all this for 20 years and then he disappeared. So he was reporting on the Andromedans, on the Andromeda mm -hmm. Council. Then he disappeared, then somebody else came in and started talking the, about the Andromeda Council. Every 10 years, there's a new person on the scene who comes in and claims something new right. and sensational. Uh, the SSP stuff is not so new and it's not so sensational. Mm -mm. As Michael Ralph talked about it, he claimed he was on Mars, Andrew Basiago, Randy Kramer, uh, and a few others. So it's not a new concept. Mm -mm. It's been around. The Blue Avians have been around. It's in Ashiana Dean's book. It's in another woman's book. It's been around since the 1990s. And um, when Corey Good talks about Lunar Operations Command, that it being a swastika, um, an old German base that was first built out, and then the LOC built on more on that base, that actually comes from a movie called Iron Sky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were actually trying to get the director of that to come on the show. <laughs> I don't think he wants to do that. <laughs> well, actually, when I, was, when I was looking for images of Lunar Operations Command about the circular building, mm -hmm. I, uh, coincidence or not, I stumbled on Iron Sky, and I'm like, oh, that's a German swastika <laughs> um, old base that Corey Good claims is now the LOC. That's not how I remembered it. Well, there and the other thing about that is there was that building in in California that was a swastika, and I think they've changed it now. Yeah, but, it was an old marine barrack. Yeah, it was an old marine barrack, and it looked like a swastika. <coughs> uh, well, I am going to open up the phone lines now. If anybody listening wants to call in with a question for Ileana or comments, that number is uh, 757-525-3276. You can see it uh, right up there on the screen. And... Uh, Give us a call. I will say one thing. Try to keep it on topic. And please be nice. I will hang up on your ass. Okay, so where were we now? I just lost myself with all that. <coughs> oh, yeah, the swastika building. Yeah, he had said that, from what I remember from watching the Cosmic Disclosure Show, I have watched all of those episodes. I've subjected myself. Well, I can't say that. I probably slept through about a quarter of it. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, he was saying that it was constantly being added on to, and it didn't no longer look like a swastika. And uh, I, so in your description of the Lunar Command is those circular modules. And yes. if I remember right, Tony, I don't think he got to see a good look of the outside of it. No, no, he was mostly inside. I got to see pretty well inside of it and, you know, through those... Um, opaque windows i got to see the outside of the on the moon i got to see the moon um and i think they put me around town on the moon too and a few of those other bases because i've mapped out certain locations mm -hmm. on the moon and on mars and the funny thing is what recently came out from google mars was an april fool's joke with them having a base near the aeolus mensa region mm -hmm. and that's where i actually mapped out the uh, Mars ICC Base 5 near that area. So topographical location is the same, except, um, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I'm just, uh, I'm, uh, that's, that's amusing that they would do that, and I wonder if it's by design or not. Well, I th if I... I think I've, it's design. Yeah, if I... Disclosure. If I've learned anything about the way that these people running the world operate is that they love dangling it in your face. They really do. So yeah. it wouldn't surprise me at all, not one bit. Uh, that number again, one more time, is 757-525-3276 if you're listening on the radio stream. And uh, One question I've had for a long time is, you know, let's say that, you know, we always see all these movies about uh, people, you know, accidentally screwing around building a radio in the garage and they end up uh, accidentally contacting aliens with, you know, an old radio hooked up to a speaking spell. But realistically, like if if a layperson, uh, a common person like me, wanted to, you know, build some sort of homemade tech that could pick up signals from SSP ships or otherwise, you know, hack into the SSP, uh, you know, send out a signal that they would pick up, how would one go about it? What sort of tech do they use? Like, how could a, a normal person get noticed? Well, you have to know your computers pretty well. 
because they're pretty, um, their systems are advanced. So an old ham radio just won't do it these days. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Well, you know, one thing about it, knowing everything that you know about these programs and the slavery and, and you know, the trauma, why would you <laughs> Why would you want to, man? You that desperate to see space? I mean, I, uh, I kind of do want to see Mars. <laughs> yeah, Mars it would be cool. nice. Mars is cool. And the tech they have. For me, one of the um, things that I liked was the tech. That's what did it for me. So mm -hmm. it, that was one of the incentives that kept me going in those programs was the tech. Because it's that good. It's advanced, great tech. Yeah. I mean, the stories I've heard, it definitely is. Um, I'd love to see Ceres or Triton how, or any of these places, Titan, yeah. any of them. How do they communicate? What type of technology? Do they, they obviously, like you said, they're not using the old ham radio. Is it like a quantum thing? Is it, you know, just different waves that we're not aware of? Well, most most um, abducted ICC assets have um, Neuralink implants, and they talk to each other through the implants. Well, I mean, telepathy, like telepathy is is actually rampant in the assets. Right. We, they all had implants. Mm -hmm. What I was referring to was actually like, say, um, they had an ICC asset in a ship in Solar System A. And they needed to yeah. contact Solar System C. They would still use telepathy over that type of distance. Sometimes, yeah, and they used uh, encrypted um, computers the, from the database. But you you don't know what kind of signal they use. No. they send. Oh boy, if I remember that, I'd be in trouble. <laughs> I bet you would. Well, uh, we read an article. Uh, I think it was last week or the week before, talking about how uh, scientists in China are now able to. Um, they were able to quantum entangle particles that were on Earth and 300 miles up in space at the same time. Yeah, no, it was 700 miles. 700 miles? Mm -hmm. Okay, even better. So, I mean, I know that, that, you know, they're just now starting to release that sort of tech out to the public. Yeah, um, and the assets from the SSB ICC, they still have their implants working when they're returned. So they, through the implants, because it's video and audio, they mm -hmm. can send you sync signals, they can send you messages, and they can talk to you through those implants, and they do. Now, were your ocular and other implants removed before they brought you back? Nope. I had them up until recently. They were causing, the, the implants were starting to degrade and were causing me problems, so mm -hmm. I got them removed, thankfully, and I'm no longer receiving messages, signals, nothing before I was. Right. Now, what's the what was the removal process like? I did it partially myself, and I I worked from with Christopher Jacobs. He is another SSP um, contactee, uh, an experiencer. He's very psychic. Um, I also worked with Jim Charles. He does channeling. Um, he helped remove some of it. So I, I I did work with a few different people. And myself. So uh, I assume you're talking that these were actual implant or ethere ethereal implants, just not actual physical implants. Uh, they were partially etheric and partially uh, nanofiber gold technology that can't be detected in the brain. Uh -huh. It's connected to the neural system of, in my brain, and it, I had to go and remove it. So it's gold filaments. Yes, yeah. It leaked gold in my head, and I actually have MRIs. I suddenly got a, a lesion in the white matter of my brain. Ouch. Never had a lesion before for the last six years, and suddenly I couldn't remember anything. Um, I was having brain pressure. like I felt like it was squeezing in on my brain. So I went and my neurologist didn't believe me. Mm -hmm. I, I paid a private MRI. I just paid for it, and I'm like, ugh. Yep, that's what I thought it was there. It's like it's like scarring from these implants. Now, don't take this the wrong way or anything. It's, I'm just curious. Have you talked to a psychologist or, a, you know, a shrink or whatever? I'd just be interested in what, you know, because it seems like anybody talking about these kind of stories would automatically be labeled, you know, insane. A quack! But, yeah. Uh, my advice is... Do not go to a psychologist <laughs> or a shrink with your story. That's... Go to their, go to a um, an alternative medicine counselor mm -hmm. practitioner who actually is um, like 
like Eve Lorgen and Augustellus. He went to her, and they did memory regression on him. Go to a specialist that actually specializes in abductions and things and will believe you. Because mm -hmm. if you go to any old neurologist, psychologist, a shrink, they won't believe you. Yeah, I'd imagine they'd try to put you on the whole cocktail of drugs well, would, immediately. Yeah. Well, I mean, thinking how everything runs from the shadows, it wouldn't surprise me if the system would just reabsorb you. They would refer you to some sort of community services bureau type thing mm. and yeah. then put you in some kind of facility where, you know, the uh, doctors from whichever faction of whichever organizations that you've had contact with in the past are just going to come scoop you up and whisk you away off to wherever and continue doing whatever they were doing. Or heavily just medicate you so you look like an idiot. Mm -hmm. You drool. <laughs> got the Thorazine so, drool going on. They either disable you, if not just, you know, remove you outright. Yeah, I don't go to shrinks. I don't go to psychologists and mainstream uh, medicine. Nope. I, mm -hmm. I act like a normal, everyday, average Joe Blow. Well, you are, from what I can tell. I mean, you just got some incredible stories. I mean... Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I've got... I've got the ET abductions, the ET contact experiences, the SSP, the ICC. What what was us smoking when I came to this planet and incarnated <laughs> yeah. on Earth? What? Yeah. Why did I want all of these experiences? Yeah, there must you... be a reason. Um, um, is there anything else you can tell us about Monarch? Um, they they like to to have assets who have psychic abilities. Monarch Solutions. Um, it's all. They choose, they choose people who are psychically well-developed in the beginning, mm -hmm. who are just born with it. Everybody has psychic ability to a certain degree, but if yours is better than somebody else's, they'll happily nab you. Well, sweet, they should come scoop me. There are times that I feel like I can't shut mine off. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, uh, now I've heard rumors, and I call them rumors because, you know, so far it's all uns unsubstantiated, but... Uh, is there a war between Monarch and Kruger going on? I know nothing about Kruger, and I just know Monarch Solutions, they had a bunch of bases, and they like to do experiments with certain type technology. That's what I experienced when, okay. I, when I was in Monarch. Kruger, I know nothing about Kruger. So I've heard never, about it. To have, you no. did, not during the programs, you never heard anything about Kruger, just nope. after the fact? No. Nope. Okay. After... I don't know anything about Kruger, so I can't really comment on that. And uh, what I will comment on is I'm not out to get Corey Good or anybody else. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, not what I mean, I'm doing. It's like I said, me personally, I'm just trying to figure it out. I mean, it's it's something weird is going on. It's no doubt yeah. about that. What exactly it is, I don't know. I don't know if I'll yeah. ever know. But To me, it stands to reason that you know, off-world politics are spilling into on-world politics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I had a bump encounter with Corey Good as part of being in the program soup. You had a bump encounter with him? Well, uh, digital online email oh, okay. encounter. Right. As a, it's just part of floating in the program soup. <laughs> Eventually, you will have, you know, mm -hmm. an encounter with one of their assets. Well... We haven't had one yet, but, you know, it'd be, uh, we, I suppose it'll come. We got about three minutes left before we have the jet. So is there anything, any points that you'd like to uh, get off your chest, so to speak, before we end the show that you haven't got to talk about yet? Yeah, I'd say uh, be use discernment when you listen to something or hear something or talk to somebody. Be very careful with email exchanges and phone calls with people who say they're whistleblowers or some sort of representative or an insider. Um, if, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Or if you feel that it's baloney, just pay close attention. Always save your emails and phone calls if you can. Mm -hmm. To have evidence, chain, you know, have a paper trail because Bill Ryan was talking about evidence and some video that he had of Corey, blah, blah, blah. Well, well, where is it? Actually document stuff. So mm -hmm. if you're accused of something, you can rebuttal it with physical hardcore evidence. The reason why we didn't put those emails up um, for everybody to see is because there are uh, privacy laws and copyright laws concerning email exchanges and phone calls so you can't really share that stuff publicly 
but I do have it, and some people have seen it. Now, I don't want a lawsuit from Corey Good. I just don't want that. Yeah, nobody does. And, you know, no. with the with his rabid fan base, and I hate to call it that, but that's what it is, he will have a lawyer on you <laughs> instantly. I mean, he's it, always getting money from people. Yeah, and the <coughs> for sharing private stuff is 150000 U.S. Mm. and 250 CAD Canadian. So we can talk about it and paraphrase it but we can't show you the proof we have the proof but we can't show you and, and i can say guys out there listening I you see me as you see lawyers. me out here you see me in here every week and you know i'm not gonna lie to you i've seen the emails and what she's saying is true in according to the emails so just so you know she's not just coming on the show and just making something up i've actually seen these emails <clears throat> Yep, and I have the original copies that I got off the Shaw, my Shaw email. About 20 different exchanges with Corey Good. And then Ra Roger Rams or Richards also um, emailed me on Facebook Messenger saying, don't go against Corey, don't cross Corey. I'm mm. like, I, you know, I don't agree completely with the information that Corey shared with me, so I'm just going to do my own thing and continue doing my work. And, you know, I would think even if he did have some sort of back channel where he could vet you the way everything is so heavily compartmentalized it would be very easy for him not to be able to have access for all of it in my opinion um yeah but you know, I, 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 do, I, I don't take just somebody's word on it i actually want to see physical documentation with stamps and or even meet somebody from the ssp that'll tell me i was never in this speed mm -hmm. so Corey good's word for it I won't take it personally because it's just it's not a it's not authenticated by anything. Mm -hmm. There's no authority to it, so I just I just can't take it. I and I won't, and I didn't. Well, I'm glad you didn't. We don't believe in authority. Period. <laughs> There's no authority but yourself here on Reality Brief. So, once again, I'd like to thank you for coming on. We do have to jet. The next show has to start getting ready to come on. So, but uh, this is uh, Ileana again. If you want to give out your um, web page or YouTube for anybody watching that wants to follow up you can feel free to go ahead and do that now so the web page is messages from a star traveler and the YouTube channel is awakening cosmic reality